Hello and welcome back to another video from the Aspiring Medics. My name is Yusuf and I'm a medical student from Oxford University. In this video, we'll be analysing my very own personal statement that got me into Oxford University, as well as Sheffield and St George's. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing to note is that Oxford University has its own selection criteria that I'd highly recommend looking at. These are divided into both personal characteristics as well as academic potential, both of which we will cover in this video. As you can see, there are eight personal characteristics. These include empathy, the ability and willingness to imagine the feelings of others and understand the reasons uh, for the views of others. Motivation, a reasonably well-informed and strong desire to practice medicine. Communication, ability to make knowledge and ideas clear using appropriate language to the audience. This is both verbal and written. Honesty and integrity, ethical awareness, which is a quality that is of course tested in interviews through questions on medical ethics. The ability to work with others, both as a team member and as a leader. The capacity for sustained and intense work. The alignment of individual values and behaviors with the values of the NHS constitution as well. We'll now move on to the academic potential qualities. These include communication skills, once again, problem solving, which involves identifying a problem, determining the cause of a problem, identifying, prioritizing, then selecting alternatives for a solution, and then implementing that solution. We also have intellectual curiosity, which you can demonstrate through your extra reading and you can check out our extra reading video for more information. All of these can be viewed on the Oxford University website itself and together uh, these uh, will form the main basis through which the admission tutors are looking for. The thing to note is that eight of the 11 characteristics for uh, medicine are personal characteristics. It's a common misconception that Oxford Medical School only cares about academics, which clearly isn't true. And all of these qualities are, as mentioned, selected for in the admissions process. Now that we've understood the Oxford Medicine Selection Criteria, we'll be able to revisit these as they appear in my medicine past statement analysis. Throughout the analysis, we'll be identifying particularly insightful reflections as well as opportunities for these to be further explored as personal statement interview questions. Right off the bat, you can see that we mentioned intellectual curiosity. Now, some students like to talk about a childhood moment in which they had a revelation, they wanted to do medicine. Others speak about how they've always wanted to study medicine from a young age. But for me, it was wanting to apply science directly to the disease, that intellectual curiosity, as well as being able to work with patients and other healthcare professionals in a way that's emotionally fulfilling. So in blue, we have our personal statement analysis, whereas in orange, we have our potential interview questions. Now, these are the hooks that the admission tutors may want to ask in interviews. For example, a range of diseases and comorbidities is a perfect illustration of this and a fair game for them to ask in interviews is what some of the comorbidities you've seen during work experience. And this is an opportunity to talk about a scenario where, for example, there may be a patient with multiple diseases, say with diabetes and blood pressure, for example. We'll now move on to my second paragraph here. You'll note that I've spoken about teamwork. Now, simply stating your work placements isn't insightful for medical schools. They're not interested in the exact sort of placement you did, but rather what you've taken away from those experiences, what personal insight it gave you, how have you learned more about empathy, resilience, teamwork. It's also important to not over-exaggerate the impact it had. It's about getting the balance between coming across as genuine and being insightful as well. So here we discuss multidisciplinary meetings, allied healthcare professionals, and holistic medicine that can be further expanded upon in interviews as well. I then moved on to discussing a thoracosynthesis, which is a procedure used to remove fluid from the space between the lungs and the chest wall. I also underwent further research to find out the causes of fluid buildup and how it can be treated as well. We then reflect on the role of a doctor as a practitioner, teacher and supervisor. This is not only in terms of understanding the communication skills required as a doctor, but that's something further expanded on through my subsequent mentoring at my school. It didn't just 
be something that I mentioned, but I was also able to tailor it by uh, mentioning how I was able to tailor my mentoring to the age and ability of the students I taught, which demonstrates my verbal communication skills, as well as empathy. In this paragraph, I began by talking about my work experience at a pharmaceutical research and development site and being introduced to chlorhexidine, which was a great way to be able to delve deeper into public health and understand how chlorhexidine, which is a disinfectant, is being applied in different contexts, and more broadly, talk about global health inequity. I then carried on with this thread and linked it to a debating society I took part in at school called Model United Nations to demonstrate my problem solving. The key takeaway here is that it not only demonstrates you, you understand the qualities required for a doctor, but you also want to show and not tell that you possess and have spent time developing them. So throughout your personal statement, you want to create these hooks for the admissions tutors. And so having a few unique examples is really useful. Your involvement in academic projects and debates can be a really good way of demonstrating your intellectual curiosity. As well as your academic ability, you really want to show that you have the foundations for your interpersonal skills. And now your voluntary and part-time jobs will be a fantastic way to show your commitment, empathy, and communication skills. Now, by far, the experiences that helped me the most in my medicine application process was working as an optical assistant, as well as volunteering at a care home. Through these two opportunities, I was able to develop my communication skills that aside from the medicine application process are such important skills for you to develop in all aspects of your life. I then went on to discuss the idea of loneliness and chronic pain that elderly residents uh, may experience, as well as the importance of listening and how emotionally fulfilling that it was able to be uh, to be able to get to know care home residents. I knew I wanted to have an academic focus on my personal statement because I was applying to Oxford. This was my academic paragraph where I was able to discuss my supercurricular involvement to further evidence my capacity for sustained work as well as my intellectual curiosity. The thing to note here is that you can show this through a multitude of different ways. You don't need to do a Crest or Industrial Cadet Award. There are other ways you can go about this and you can find further information as mentioned on our medicine extra reading video. I specifically mentioned my EPQ on pain receptors, which could easily be asked at Oxford interviews, for example, in asking about why pain is important, how receptors work in discriminating between touch and a painful stimulus, as well as how it can go wrong in terms of being hypersensitive or hyposensitive to pain. Moving on to my medical ethics article was a great way to then be able to understand the ethical dilemmas uh, that doctors face within uh, end of life care, as well as being able to be better informed of the disheartening situations that doctors may face. This therefore allowed me to demonstrate not only ethical awareness, written communication skills, but also further developing a more realistic insight into medicine. Now, the thing to note is please don't treat your personal statement as a CV, simply listing off all the science projects that you've done and articles you've written. It's about quality over quantity. Also talk about what you've learned from science and research projects. Has it made you more patient, more resourceful? Has it deepened your understanding of medicine as a career? Here is my extracurricular paragraph where I was able to discuss my role as head boy to illustrate my ability to work with others, as well as my capacity for intense work in adapting to last minute changes, which of course has broad applications to medicine. A potential question could be about a particular moment in which I had to adapt to an urgent, important situation and what I learned about myself as a result of it. I then moved on to discussing my involvement in karate, public speaking and drama in improving my time management skills, which is crucial for both medical students and doctors. Public speaking and debating further improved my verbal communication skills as well. Moreover, my involvement in the Gold Duke of Edinburgh enabled me to give further evidence of teamwork and problem solving under pressure. A potential interview question here could therefore be on a particular moment in which I faced a difficult situation within a team. 
Medicine is very demanding, both as a university course and as a career. And therefore, you want to show the admissions tutors that you've really developed the coping mechanisms that will mean you're able to manage higher workloads and the stress involved. This is also an opportunity to show admissions tutors that you have a realistic, evaluated understanding of medicine as a career. I end my personal statement with summarising my intellectual curiosity as well as my motivations. In summary, it's crucial that you demonstrate a realistic understanding of medicine and you can end off by reinforcing that for you, the positives outweigh the negatives. The punchier you can make your conclusion, the better, but at the same time, don't overthink it and make it genuine and personal to you. There we have it. Thanks for watching this video from the Aspiring Medics. If you would like expert feedback tailored to your universities, complete with individualized analytics, check out our medicine personal statement review service on the Aspiring Medics website. It's the most cost effective service on the market and we've had glowing feedback from students. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you found this useful. See you in the next video.